SpaceX doesn't waste any time. Right after achieving orbit for the first time with the third Starship test flight, they're already moving fast towards the fourth one. They've recently finished one of the last steps needed for this launch, and we're going to break down what this means in today's video. Before we dive deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on Starship and all of SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements in the future. A week after the notable third test flight of SpaceX's Starship, the company is already moving towards the next test. This third flight was a significant endeavor, showcasing the capabilities and potential areas for improvement in the design of the rocket. The test began at SpaceX's Starbase facility located in South Texas. Here, the Starship, towering at 165 feet for its upper stage, was prepped for launch. The countdown proceeded without hitch, leading to the ignition of the engines and the subsequent liftoff. Upon liftoff, the Starship's ascent was powered by the robust thrust of its super-heavy booster. The booster performed its role flawlessly, pushing the vehicle towards the space. After reaching the desired height above Earth, the ship separated from the super-heavy booster as planned. This separation is a key moment in the flight, allowing the ship to continue its journey into space while the booster begins its return to Earth. The booster's descent was controlled initially, aiming for a precise landing in the Gulf of Mexico. However, despite a successful start to its descent, the Super Heavy did not complete its landing as planned and disintegrated around 1,650 feet above sea level. Meanwhile, the ship achieved its goal of reaching the speed necessary to orbit. The ship remained in space for approximately 50 minutes, during which it conducted multiple tests, including the opening and closing of the payload door and the transfer of propellant. However, the mission faced its most significant challenge during the re-entry phase. As the ship re-entered Earth's atmosphere, it had to withstand extreme heat and pressure, testing the durability and effectiveness of its heat shield and structural design. Despite the preparations and the technology on board, the ship broke apart before it could safely land. While SpaceX continues to analyze data from the flight, the focus is also on the upcoming fourth mission. For the next mission, SpaceX has already moved the ship to the launch pad at Starbase to conduct upcoming static fires. These pre-launch tests, which involve firing the engines briefly while the vehicle is anchored to the pad, are crucial for assessing the vehicle's readiness for flight. SpaceX's president mentioned that Starship could fly again as early as May. The spacecraft S-29 was seen rolling to test stand B for upcoming static fire tests, as per the scheduled road closures. The static fire test, scheduled for March 22nd, is the next major hurdle for S-29, following a series of spin prime tests earlier in the month. Recent developments have also seen the delivery of two sections of the water-cooled manifold system to this site. This system is designed to be integrated with the flame diverter currently under construction, aiming to manage the intense heat and force generated during rocket tests. The system's design features numerous small pipes, possibly filled with concrete for added durability during operation. The focus remains on S-29 and its upcoming tests. Meanwhile, the booster for Flight 4, known as B-11, awaits its turn for static fire tests hinting at ongoing upgrades and preparations at the launch pad. In a recent update on X, SpaceX shared a photo of the ship at the launch pad, prepared for the static fire tests. Another image showed three ships at Starbase, partially hidden by heavy fog, indicating SpaceX's plans for numerous Starship test flights this year. It's not just the booster and the Starship that SpaceX is focusing on. They're also improving the launch pad and other ground infrastructure. Following the third flight, they initiated a series of upgrades to the launch pad and started construction on a second launch tower. Initial assessments after Flight 3 suggested the launch pad was in relatively good condition. Despite not facing severe damage as seen in the first flight, some wear and tear were observed. Post-launch images showed that the protective steel plates at the launch site had discoloration, indicating the extreme heat from the 33 Raptor engines. Additionally, parts of the orbital launch mount, including the booster quick disconnect cover, showed signs of scorching and partial melting. The launch tower itself wasn't spared. The ship quick disconnect seemed to have moved from its original position, 
likely due to vibrations during liftoff. Some images also suggested the Starship didn't lift off perfectly upright, hinting at potential issues with the launch mechanism's alignment. SpaceX quickly began addressing these issues on March 19th. Workers were seen performing what appeared to be reinforcement tasks on the launch tower. The rear section of the booster quick disconnect was removed, likely for inspections and repairs, as it showed significant wear. Fuel hoses for methane and liquid oxygen were also removed from the booster quick disconnect, indicating possible repairs or replacements. In addition to fixing and upgrading the current launch pad, SpaceX is also focusing on a new launch tower. The work on stacking its segments hasn't started likely due to the company's focus on the recent flight. However, it's expected to ramp up soon. Compared to what SpaceX achieved, the minor damages to the launch pad barely matter. One of the biggest achievements during this third flight was the successful propellant transfer demonstration, a critical capability for future missions to distant destinations like Mars. This technology is of particular interest to NASA as it aligns with the goals of the Artemis program by potentially extending the reach and duration of human exploration missions. Before the launch, the teams conducted thorough final checks on weather conditions at T-60 minutes. Given the favorable conditions, the launch director proceeded with the propellant loading process, filling the Starship and its super-heavy booster with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. This process, completed by T-45 minutes, is critical, not only because of the technical requirements, but also due to the sheer volume of propellant involved. The Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines, upon ignition, consumed around 40,000 pounds of propellant per second. At T plus 2 minutes and 44 seconds, the stage separation occurred. This was executed flawlessly, with most of the booster engines shutting down except for three, allowing for a controlled separation. Immediately after, the upper stage's six engines ignited, marking the start of its journey to orbit. During its ascent, the booster initiated a boost-back burn, reorienting itself for a return to Earth. This maneuver was captured in incredible detail by the onboard cameras, showcasing the booster's controlled descent and re-entry preparations. As the booster approached the Gulf of Mexico, it performed a landing burn, aiming for a soft splashdown. Although the feed was lost shortly before landing, this maneuver is critical for SpaceX's vision of reusable rockets. The launch generated significant attention, not only for its visual spectacle with the water suppression system at the launch pad, but also for the critical technologies being tested. The stability of Starship during this operation is paramount, as any adverse effects could jeopardize the mission's success. NASA and SpaceX engineers will review the flight data in detail to assess the performance of the propellant transfer. They are particularly interested in the fluid dynamics within the tanks and the conditions under which the Raptor engines receive the propellant. This analysis is crucial for ensuring the engines can be reliably restarted in orbit. However, the test flight was not without its challenges. During the coast phase, unexpected vehicle roll rates necessitated abandoning a planned on-orbit relight of a single Raptor engine. Despite losing the vehicle during this phase, the data gathered until the loss of signal provided SpaceX with valuable insights. The live feed showed the heat shield tiles and the effects of re-entry. SpaceX has a plan to launch five starships in 2024. With one already launched on March 14th, four more launches are expected in the remaining eight months, equating to one launch every two months. This schedule might be challenging due to the lengthy preparation needed for each launch. However, SpaceX is expanding its launch sites to help manage this tight timeline. At the forefront of this expansion efforts is the construction of a massive new facility at the Starbase Complex in Brownsville, Texas. Musk has announced a $100 million investment into a large-scale five-story industrial complex. The proposed Starbase office complex is set to cover an area equivalent to 15 football fields. For context, this size is about a quarter of Boeing's largest assembly building, where the 777 aircraft are built. According to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, the project aims to enhance SpaceX's manufacturing, with construction slated to start soon, and a completion target set for early 2025.
This new facility will include office space and a dedicated factory for the Starship project, covering more than 1.3 million square feet in total. The project's location near the launch site adds logistical convenience, supporting the increased pace of production and launch operations. While SpaceX is making headlines with one achievement after another, its competitors, including Blue Origin, are struggling with their own challenges. Both companies were founded in the early 2000s by two of the wealthiest individuals on the planet, Musk and Jeff Bezos. Moreover, both companies have been developing heavy lift vehicles. SpaceX has developed the Starship, a fully reusable spacecraft designed to carry humans to Mars and beyond. It has already conducted three test flights of its Starship vehicle. These test flights, despite not all ending in success, have provided invaluable data to further refine and improve the design of the spacecraft. In contrast, Blue Origin has been working on its New Glenn rocket, a heavy lift vehicle designed for orbital missions. Despite being in development for several years, Blue Origin has yet to conduct a test flight of New Glenn. Alongside Blue Origin's struggles to keep up, United Launch Alliance is also facing financial challenges and is potentially going to be sold to another company soon. There's talk about who might buy ULA, including a surprising idea that SpaceX could be interested. This seems unlikely at first glance, because SpaceX is already a big player in the market, and buying a competitor like ULA would be complicated. But this idea is out there because the other three companies mentioned as possible buyers, Blue Origin, Cerberus, and Textron, might not be ready to pay so much for ULA. On the practical side, if SpaceX were to buy ULA, it could mean less competition for SpaceX. In business, it's not unusual for bigger companies to buy smaller ones to reduce competition and risk. By acquiring ULA, SpaceX could control more of the market, which could lead to setting better prices and schedules for their launches. Also, buying ULA could give SpaceX access to ULA's contracts with the U.S. government and military, which are very valuable. This would not only bring more business to SpaceX, but also make its income more stable and diverse. Furthermore, SpaceX could benefit from ULA's technology and experience. ULA is known for its reliable and precise launches, so SpaceX could improve its own services by using ULA's technology and know-how. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe.